Welcome to Trading Lounge and the Indices and no change in the count. So with the S&P here, we're looking for wave four to wave five up here. And we're looking for five waves within that particular structure. So from the weekly, we break it down into the daily. And as mentioned, we're looking from wave four here to wave five to the upside here in five waves. So we have uh, wave one and two and three, four, five. And pay no attention to the actual price points over here or the actual time that it will take for that. It does appear that the, the elections will be around that time there as well. Um, our main focus though is from this low to wave one here being in five waves. So we want to break that down into the intraday here. And let me just get this into the frame here. And we've got a few extra little dudes on the side there so we don't need those um so wave four here we've got one and two and then three four five like i say pay no attention to the price or time that that's going to take at that point we can do ratios it's not not a problem um it's just much safer to track the actual wave structures themselves because sometimes they extend, sometimes they, they're they a slow burn and they contract a lot and all sorts of things sort of happen with the personality of the wave structure. From wave two to wave three here, as you know, we're looking for wave five waves of one and two. And I think we can call this top in here now as wave three and we're looking for wave four that can pull back to the wave four of one lesser degree. As I mentioned uh, yesterday and probably the day before, uh, when we're working with ones and twos, they're pretty sort of simple. Now we're getting the, uh, we're past, this is the halfway of the structure from the low to the fifth wave of one here. This is the halfway mark and we've got ones and twos. And now we're going to be in fours and fives here. <clears throat> this is where we make mistakes. So in wave fours, we make mistakes. I make mistakes, I get it wrong, Way there's a dozen different types of corrections that can occur in these particular uh, patterns. So the thing is, is that what we can say is that we will be going to the upside, it will be time consuming, it will be a slow burn to the upside. Uh, what you see here is not what you get next, so we'll be in in some more sideways corrective moves at this t at this point so one thing that we sort of know is that if we just take the low of wave two here and take that to the top there just roughly <clears throat> then we know that 38.2 percent here so we know that the worst thing that could possibly happen is we come down to the 5500 now that could be um that could be this way four. It could be this way four. Uh, that's that's the worst that can happen. So we know that we're going to be going into corrective patterns. We know there's further to the upside. We know that it's a slow going to be. We're entering a slow burn and sideways corrective patterns. So things we know and what we don't know. So breaking this down further and uh, into one thousand ticks uh, here. We're considering this just coming back here a little bit. Well, blue wave one, blue wave two here, and one, two, three, four, five to the upside here uh, as wave three here. I have made a few little adjustments here. Now, I could put this here by the by and put this in here as an ABC pattern in here for for this wave four here, but we could also see it as uh, a B wave over here and... Uh, well, I could put the A wave here. I could probably, it does, I, can, I could probably put this over. I can get five waves out of here. I was looking at the, um, <clears throat> the OEX on this. So the OEX is the, um, uh, is the, um, the S&P 100, you know. So, uh, yeah, so I was just looking at this here. I can get one, two, three, four, five down. So I can get, I could look at, the, it's quite clear that this is one, two, three, four, five coming down here. So I can go an A and a B and a C and put a low in here. And I can count this as five waves to the upside, but this could also be an, an A wave, an A and a B and a C wave here. So uh, it can drop down to a, um, it can drop down to a lower level here. So this range here, this wave four can pull back 
down uh, into this here and uh, if I have a look at the the upside here that would put that at um, that would put that up to this this range up here for that um, yeah so anyway the OXE the uh, S&P 100 uh, can be handy in in uh, in looking at uh, at these type of um, uh, things uh, here for this Oh, just checking the AI here for this. Yeah, not to worry too much. Um, yeah, so basically we can still come down here. This is probably the worst that will happen coming down to the way four of one lesser degree on the S&P here. So I'll do the NASDAQ the same as well. So on the NASDAQ here, we're looking at uh, on a weekly chart, way four here going up for way five. And uh, yeah, so on the daily chart here, we're looking for five waves up there. So this will be the same <clears throat> here as well. So we've got one, two, three, four, five up here. We're looking for five waves in this particular move here, so we're going to break that down into the uh, intraday here, picking it up from that particular low point here. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring this over to here and this over to here, and I'm going to call that top in here. Now, obviously, as I mentioned before, this is where mistakes can be made, um, but the main point here is that... Um, that you know that we're going into corrective areas, but at the same time, you know we're also going to be moving higher in all of this as well. This trend to the upside is not completed, um, but these wave fours here are going to be, uh, this can pull back to the wave four of one lesser degree, or it can pull up here a little bit higher on this. So it'll be something like this here. So it's just going to get very complicated in here. So if you've made money in this trend here, then this is where you're going to lose it in in all of here the trade that we really want will probably be after the elections of the dust settles and uh, well but we'll see where that is you know we don't i don't know that just yet but this trade here this third wave here this is really the one that we want this is our next you know this is the money the money shot as they would say um all of this here is going to be complicated you don't want to get destroyed in any of this when you get into areas like this it's it's a good idea to just trade less so if you normally trade you know five contracts or whatever cfds or futures or etfs or whatever just trade less just you know drop it down to half or third or find another market or something uh, from here, we'll go into the 1,000 tick area here, so I won't go into the bigger picture too much. So we're looking at possible wave three being in place here on this top. And <clears throat> once again, the good news here is we can clearly see that this particular pattern here is corrective in nature, so it's not like a serious top. And we could look at this as an A and a B and a C over here. I understand that we could look at it as one and two to the upside. I get that. But um, I think it's best to give the bad news first, the worst, you know, and hope for the best, that type of thing. So that's sort of where we are here. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I just sort of expect this to, you know, there should be some sort of relationship between the length of this one here and the length of this one here. So it'll be down here uh, at so somewhere at that point. And then this whole pattern that we've been looking at can be transferred over to other markets. Now the ETF here on the Russell uh, <coughs> can be slightly different. Um, I could also push this up to here, which is not such a bad idea. Uh, it's a little bit sort of tricky in here. But uh, in the meantime, we can look at this as a way four. It's either this way four or that way four here. I've just tied it into the other markets at this point. Um, it can obviously come down and test that there as well. But uh, we're going to take um, profit uh, up here on this fifth wave here somewhere. Now, I know that we could put this third wave over uh, over yonder here for this, which is probably the right thing to do. Um, in fact, I think I might even just do that while we're here. Because it's just got a different wave structure than the other markets. 
I mean, not, it hasn't got a different wave structure. It's just that um, what I need to do basically is tie it into. Uh, I need to tie it into a wave one up here and a wave two here, but it's not the same wave one and two as the other markets. But it will be same same. It'll you know will follow the same patterns. So um, anyway, this will be about here somewhere. That's where the demand is. So it'll be something like this. But yeah, I think we'll take the money off around this this particular top here for for this, and that way we won't get caught into this. But we've got a nice series of one and two, one and two, one and two, a nice third wave, and it helps confirm the third wave with a little gap in it as well. So that's nice. <clears throat> and we come over to the euro markets, the European markets, and we're looking at the um, the DAX here on the daily chart. And we've got wave four here, and the same as the S and P, we're looking for five waves up of one and two, and then three, four, five up here. <clears throat> and uh, obviously, we can see the market pulling up into these, you know, into these old highs over here. So we know that it's, uh, you know, it's hitting supply there. Supply just meaning sellers. And we can also see here too, in terms of Elliott, the one and two and one and two and a strong third wave here. So we're just going to be in fours and fives over here for all of this, you know. So let's pick it up on the um, on the 1000 tick here. So we're just really drilling into the intraday here. But that's the wave four low that we just we just viewed then just here. So we're looking at one and two and one and two. And we're also going to call like the S&P, the third wave in here, this blue wave three. So that's our wave one up there. We've got one, two, three, three, four and five for this wave one, wherever that may be. And then between two and three, we're looking for five waves of one and two here. Just expand that out. So from wave two here, we're looking up to wave three here with uh one two three four five i could push that across there as well i guess but so um yeah so we could drop a little further here too if we take this wave too low and this one here the 38.2 percent is down here further so it's quite possible for it to drop here further i think we should sort of expect something like that but i can see we've got this as an a and a b and a c here but and the way for one lesser degree is is here as well so i don't think we'll be going too far but i think we should expect something a little bit deeper in that point uh, at that point there but also too um we're going we're not going to take profit on this just yet we probably won't ride this way four out, but um, we'll ride this one out. So we'll leave the stop out of the way. And uh, we can look for some type of, um, you know, little correction here to come into play. I'm just giving the sort of worst case scenario. But we'll look at uh, taking part profit um, up at this, um, this one here. And then we can look to be taken profit on the other one up here if you want to burn that out if you're holding cfds it's okay to hold through this one not so much this one you know it's okay when you're in a nice trend like this you you know you you're uh you're, you're doing okay but uh overnight financing uh calculated daily uh is compounding and uh the costs are quite high even though you, they don't you know the cfd providers don't show you that you know compound interest at the uh as it as it builds you know they just clip your ticket so um yeah it's something that you need to keep an eye on um but that's where the dax is so that's all pretty simple and then the footsie is the same as well so if we can look at the footsie in terms of <coughs> this wave low this wave four here and uh same as the s p and the other markets one and two and going up for wave three over here somewhere and then wave four and wave five up here for wave one and then back for wave two that can be you know quite come back further than this we'll, we'll work that out um but in the meantime from two to three here we're looking for five waves so we've got uh wave one and two and now we've got wave three in here and uh wave four so we could also have a look at that i don't think that needs to come down much further actually it looks like it's about where it should be at the 40% mark there roughly yeah 38 here so we're kind of where we are but it does look a little bit um 
a little bit impulsive coming down. So, I mean, obviously we can come down a bit further. Uh, the worst sort of thing would be something probably on the 8.2 here, and then we'll sort of move up at that point. That's okay. I mean, we could get an A and a B and a C out of this, but we did also make a new high here as well. So, yeah, and we're going to bring the wave 3 in, so... It's a little bit sort of scary with it moving down like that, but the wave fours should break the trend line off the wave two. So it's doing all the right things. It's where it's supposed to be at the moment. How that finishes off, I haven't had time to pull that apart here, but I can see there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. Uh, so we may get a, a little ABC pattern out of this. It'll get a little bit ugly, but like I said, these wave fours, you know, I've told you they'll come and they're coming, they're here, and they're doing their job, and um, that's that really. And the the Aussie market, uh, same thing as well. If we look at the uh, the way four here, and this has also got the same count pretty much as the US market because the ASX is governed really by the banks. They do more volume. And when we look at uh, our, our, our banks are... Um, uh, pretty much move with the US bank. So if we're looking at CBA here, for example, we can look at wave three and four here, and we're going up there as wave one and two and three and four and five up here for one, and then a nice big correction here. So, you know, uh, we're doing that. This is CBA and the ASX 200 is doing the same thing here. Uh, the US banks are on the same pathway that's connected. You know, everything's kind of connected starting with interest rates um so yeah so that's that really so in this case here we've got wave four and we're going up in five waves one and two and then all the way up for three four and five pay no attention to these price points or time and all the rest of it um and then from between two and three here we're looking for five waves of one and two and three four and five up here for that and then in here, we've just finished one, two, three, four, five for one and two, and you've got three, four, five here. I'm going to tie that in here. I know there's other counts you could play out here as well, but it's best if I tie things in here. Now, this is also it's at the 8,000 here, so we could also look at this as a classic trading levels pattern occurring here. So we've got the arrival here, the reaction, the first high above the level, an ABC pattern, and then going up here again. Um, so this here, I'm not sure how this is going to play out here. One thing that we can do, though, is we can look at this here, and the 38.2% is here. So we could view this as a little A, B, and C pattern coming into play here. So that's... Uh, um, that's that. Obviously, if you were trading up, you would want to be taking some something off at the 8,000. You know uh, 8 is the third strongest number, but anything with a lot of zeros on the end is going to be, you know, attract large orders. So that's that, all in all. So thanks for tuning in. Cheers.